So I'm vlogging from in bed, something which I haven't done before, but um, it's quite easy actually to just use my phone for vlogging because um, iPhone 6 cameras are obviously, they're fairly decent, um, they pick up audio fairly well. And obviously my main camera that I use for like kind of sit down videos and photography and stuff, it's a bulky Canon DSLR, so it's not always the most practical thing, especially in public and stuff. If I ever wanna vlog in public, it's really friggin' obvious what I'm doing and that just attracts attention to me that I'm not fond of. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, doing this. So today is my Sawen vlog. Um, it's just gonna be very much like the Mabon one that I did where I'm just taking you around with me and showing you how I celebrate the Sabbath and things that are related to it um, and just give you a little bit of insight on one of the, another Wiccan holiday for people that are interested in Wiccan but don't really know a lot about it. So what Samhain is, is it's a festival or holiday that takes place from the 31st of October to the 1st of November um, in the Northern Hemisphere or the 1st of March in the Southern Hemisphere. And what it is for Wiccans anyway, I don't know about the other religions, um, what it is for us Wiccans is it marks the end of the turning of the wheel of the year. So Samhain is our kind of new year, if you will. Um, it marks the end of the Harvest Festival and the beginning of winter. And it's all about death and rebirth kind of thing. So there's a lot of focus on um, kind of rejuvenating yourself and giving yourself a new focus for the new year, um, paying respects to deceased relatives and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be kind of going through all of those things in a little bit more detail in this video and just a few other bits and pieces like fun things like showing you my altar for Samhain. Um, I'm just going to move because that's not good but now the lighting's pretty bad. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't vlog on your phone. Lesson learned. But yeah, just taking you through everything like I did in the Mabon video, I feel like this Sabbath personally is a little bit more interesting in terms of there's a little bit more you can do to celebrate it than there was with Mabon, but it's all just down to personal preference. Everybody prefers a different Sabbath, just like people of no faith or of Christian faith prefer something like Easter over Christmas or vice versa. They have their holidays and different holidays resonate with different people. But yeah, the Sam Samhain is, um, one of my favourite. So. so I'm just in town right now. I've just been doing a little bit of shopping, gathering some correspondences, just running some errands type thing. Um, I'm a little bit like poo my pants because I've never vlogged in public before in town. And it looks quite weird because I'm literally just sat here with my phone filming myself, which is weird. So. But on another note, I've just picked up a um, gingerbread latte for the first time ever. I've literally never tried a gingerbread latte in my life, considering how much I love my lattes and gingerbread. You would have thought I'd put the two together sooner, but it's not on par with my caramel latte by any means. It's nowhere near as good as that, but it is still pretty good. And gingerbread is actually one of the relevant correspondences for Samhain, so. So I'm back in one of my favourite ever places, um, I'm walking through the woods behind my house. I have talked about them previously in my Mabon video, um, they're just a really, really cute place to come when you want to get a little bit more in touch with nature again and uh, for, for finding correspondences and things like that and they're just I think they're just really beautiful. They've got this like natural walkway that's been formed between the trees. And it just gives me like really fairy tale vibes and I love that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going as like full on today. There's people, I'm gonna wait. Okay, so there's literally a lot of people walking past me right now. It's making me very anxious. So that's fun. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna wait here in the little clearing until everybody leaves, leaves me alone. Oh, and I've done the thing I always do and spotted a squirrel, one second. 
you listen, you can hear him making a fuss. Oh, there we go. Just there, look. Hey, buddy. I feel like he's gonna ambush me any second. Like there's gonna be like 20 squirrels all jump down from the tree and attack me. Oh. Oh hey, look. Somebody else must have been celebrating because they've left some bird feed out on the like feeders that we made. So that's pretty cute. Oh So I've just got back from the shop to a like huge stack of mail so um, I'm just going to do the British thing and grab myself a cup of tea, have 10 minutes, um, you can see I'm very like flushed from being outside in the cold, um, yeah sitting over my mail and whatnot, and then we'll get started with the more exciting wicker things. So my Daegu's are still making a major fuss, I love that. Um, I've set up my correspondences and the things that will be going at my altar today for Samhain. Starting over here we've got my tarots which always go at my altar when I do any uh, ritual, celebrate any Sabbath. I don't necessarily always use them. Um, but they're just good to have there because they're, you know, a tool of your craft. So, but uh, I will be using these today. Then it's always handy to have a skull or some bones or a skeleton at your altar during Samhain just because it is all about honouring the deceased and remembering them. So that kind of represents that side of Samhain. Now the most commonly burnt scent at Samhain is sage, but I didn't have any sage on me today. Um, I went to my local wicker store, they didn't have any in either, so I had to improvise and use some cinnamon. But cinnamon around this time of year for Samhain, for Yule, is a really good scent anyway. Then we've got my candles, we've got my goddess candle, my god candle, and my ritual candle. Then we've got my wine glass slash chalice, because I don't have one. Um, in this little pot here is just some conkers, they're just a good natural element to have at your altar. It's always nice to bring a little bit of nature to your altar as being a wicker is all about honouring nature. And then we've got my relevant crystals. So for Samhain the, the relevant crystals are typically the darker crystals. So we've got my black obsidian rock, we've got my black onyx gemstone, again it's another dark one. Uh, bloodstone is always recommended to put at your altar during this time as well 
So I've got my Bloodstone, another darker one, and then one that isn't necessarily a correspondence of Samhain, but is seen kind of universally as the general gem or crystal of Wicca is um, Clear Quartz. So it didn't need to be at the altar, but I'm going to put it there because this one is always a good one for bringing focus and clarity. And given that I'm going to be focusing on the year to come, I think having a clarity stone is going to be a really good one to have. And finally, we have my little tree of life and then just my pentacle, which always goes at my altar no matter what I'm doing. So yeah, those are the correspondences and I'll be showing you later my completed altar setup and how I use some of these things like the tarot spread for this time of year, how I'll be using my ritual candle and so on. Like the numpty that I am, I forgot to mention my Book of Shadows. Uh, my Book of Shadows always goes at my altar too. So one of the many things that we do is write resolutions on little pieces of paper and then we burn those resolutions in, um, you can, in a candle if you're choosing, in a flame. Because Samhain is actually a fire sabbat, um, I'm going to be using my ritual candle as that just makes the most sense to me. So. Here we go, I'll try not to kill myself. <laughs> so if that's one, I'll just pop the other one on now. So next, whilst those are burning, I will drink from my chalice. The drink I have in here is um, fruit cider. Typically we drink apple cider but I'm not a fan so just got some of that in there and then I will sit and meditate and you know give thanks to relevant deities and nature and then after I will read my tarots. There is a special tarot um, spread for Samhain and so I will take you through that later on separately from my altar. So now I'm going to show you how I read my tarots on Samhain. Something I don't usually do is read my tarots on camera because I usually view that as quite a private thing but for the sake of showing people just how I do it and um, helping people that might be new to Wicca that are interested in learning to read the tarots, uh, I'm going to show you. <laughs> So I start by shuffling the cards, which I've already done. Typically, um, I just drop them, literally mash them around and things like that. It doesn't matter at all which way around the card gets mashed, whether it's like that or that. Scoop it on into your deck and just make sure that they're all facing with the back towards you. And then what you do next is lay them out, spread them out which I can't do because this surface is not playing ball. But yeah, you do a better job of what I, than what I've just done, just so that you can see a little bit of every card. Um, and then how I personally do it, it is entirely down to your personal preference. Um, you can draw them completely at random, but what I do is I hold my hand out flat, I close my eyes, I hover over the cards, and I go by gut feeling. I'll just hover back and forth like that for a short while and then usually I'll get a gut feeling and I'll lay my hand and whichever card my middle fingertip is pressing on, which in this case is this one here, I will draw out as my card and that's how I draw all of my cards. Comes out that way, that's fine. Don't turn it, leave it how it comes. If you flip it over and it's upside down, that's fine too because cards in reverse, aka when they're upside down they're in reverse, have a different meaning and it's so important that you don't tamper with the card as they naturally come out. So I've gone ahead and selected my cards and laid them all out, there's been no peeking, I've laid them out in the order they're supposed to be laid out. Now this spread is particular for Samhain, for New Year, for giving you a focus for the year as a whole. You know, with Samhain being the end of the Wicca year, you do these tarots and it guides you in what to focus on for the upcoming year and what to leave in the year just past. So I'm going to go ahead in order and read them out the way that you should in this spread. The spread works as one, two, three, four, five, 
six. Very confusing, I know, but there is method to the madness. Now there are so, so many spreads. There are literally an uncountable amount of spreads and each spread, aka just the way the cards are laid out, there's different formations. Sometimes it can be just a cross, for example. Just bear with me. <laughs> just a cross, for example. But yeah, many different elaborate ways to lay out the cards. Each spread is for a different purpose. So don't just use the same spread all the time unless you're doing it for a reason. So I'm going to turn over my first card now and the first card you turn over is what you should embrace for the year. So I've drawn the lovers which is really bizarre actually. In all of my time of reading my tarots I've never once um, drawn the lovers at all in any spread. So, so according to this my focus and the thing I should embrace the most for the upcoming year is love as that's what the lovers represents. So the second card you draw is directly underneath what you should embrace and the reason so is because this is what you should let go of in the upcoming year. So I drew the page of pentacles and the page of pentacles represents a dark youth um, kind of it just represents in general on the whole a negative past and again this is why I read tarot in private normally because I can interpret them fully honestly I did have a pretty rough childhood and so me drawing this card and it referring to kind of a dark youth I interpret that as I should let go of my past once and for all and, and let it be gone I'm, I'm 21 nearly now I've been holding on to that for long enough my childhood is officially over now that I'm 21, so let's just leave it there. So the third card that I'll draw is your guiding force. So yeah, just what should drive your courage for the year. So I drew the reversed tower. So this meaning is gonna be different if the tower was facing forwards like these two are. And the reversed tower is pretty much symbolic of oppression and engagement, imprisonment, that type of thing. So how I'm going to interpret that is that my courage needs to be very much drived by the oppression of not only myself but others because I am going to be a mental health nurse. I'm in my first year of that at university and so oppression and closed-mindedness is something I'm really going to come across on the daily basis and courage is one of the key factors of being a nurse so to be courageous and to stand up for those that are being quite blatantly and sometimes overtly covertly oppressed is going to be key. So the fourth card to draw in contrast to courage is your fears and I have drawn that is the nine of swords now the Nine of Swords represents um, shame and embarrassment and just general feelings like that. Um, I am naturally a very shameful person. I really, really hold on to shame and embarrassment a lot longer than I should. And sometimes the thing that can trigger my embarrassment or shame is really, really minor. And it does have kind of a regular effect on my daily life so I think definitely focusing and recognising that shame is a big fear that I have is going to help me to be less ashamed about my actions in the future. So the fifth card to draw represents something that you should celebrate for the forthcoming year. I have drawn the Ten of Wands so what the Ten of Wands usually stands for in reverse, as this one's upside down, um, is typically difficulties, um, hardship, that kind of thing. And people might be thinking, well, why on earth would you want to celebrate something bad that's happened or something that's causing you stress or worry? And how I interpret that personally is that difficulties should be celebrated because they always or nearly very always teach us something important. Being a mental health nurse I am going to come across difficulties every single day whether that's on behalf of my patients and clients or myself or a tricky situation 
um, difficulties are always going to be a thing. It's, it, it's for every human. Every single person goes through life experiencing certain difficulties. Recognising and celebrating those difficulties for what they've taught you is key. <coughs> and finally, the sixth card which comes underneath what you should celebrate is something you should contemplate. And I have drawn the King of Swords in reverse. So what the King of Swords in reverse typically means is cruelty, evil intentions, all of those horrible, nasty things that people can do. <laughs> um, contemplating that, uh, especially kind of honing in on the evil intention part, really take some time to focus on my own intentions and where they're coming from, whether my intentions are coming from a place of concern or they're justified or whether I am sometimes just being a bit nasty. It's human nature, we're all nasty. There is no one on this earth who is pure and nice and sweet and kind 24-7. So that, that is an important one for me to think about in the future. So yeah, that is how I read my Samhain spread. Um, that's pretty much how I read my other spreads too. It's just that, like I said before, different spreads and formations um, serve different purposes. So they can answer questions, they can give you guidance, they can just push you in a certain direction. If you're feeling a little bit lost, it can be really good to give you something like this, for example, something to focus on and embrace for the year or for the week. You can read tarot as often as you like. I always do a Sabbath particular spread on each Sabbath, but weekly I also do a cross spread, which just ignore the meanings of these cards, but it looks a little bit like this. And it is quite similar to what I've just done, but a lot shorter. It kind of gives you a focus, um, how you're going to achieve it, um, what holds you back, and how you should make sure it doesn't hold you back. So another thing that we do as Wiccans is invite our deceased relatives to tea or to a meal. Unfortunately, my family are downstairs, uh, well, my boyfriend's family, um, so I'm not able to actually set out dinner places at the table for everybody like I wanted to. So instead what I'm going to do is I've just placed some cups up here on my desk, made a pot of tea, I'm going to pour out a cup of tea for everybody as a symbolic gesture that I'm inviting my deceased relatives to, you know, come and pay a visit. Another thing you could do is go and take some gifts or pay a visit to your loved one's resting place, whether they're cremated and that's in your house, kind of set your altar up around them, or as I say, go and visit and take some flowers, take something that's meaningful to them as a gift and leave it at their resting place. There's just quite a few things that are quite normal, quite easy to do to honour relatives.